to you and the people of Nyaruru, Poleni Sana, Wazazi wa Masi, Poleni. Mumezungumzua mengi sana, sana. But, you know, I was told about Masi's demise. Early morning, by one of the people at home, and I couldn't believe it. Like Charity was asking, you know, taking time to understand. I thought they were talking about another mercy. And I'm yet to find out, really, because it was so shocking. I've heard you, James, talk about the basics with a lot of emotion. I'm yet to find out what happened to mercy. Maybe you'll explain to me. Did mercy have a condition? What was it? Could it not be helped? Gone too soon. A very vibrant, free soul. I think one of our friends eulogized her in a manner that I don't think anybody else can. A deep emotion, eloquence, somebody who lost a friend. Kwa vyo, wambulezaji nzangu wa Kenya. Vijana wetu kwa media, because wengi wenu ni kiwango hicho cha masi poleni. Continue to do the best you can for yourself, your country. We live in perilous times. Some of you were taken down by police bullets just the other day. And what can we say? The media were not spared. So your colleague from Media Max in Nakuru got a bullet in her thigh and you demonstrated. I think Kenyans now know the right to demonstrate to picket under Article 37 of our Constitution is a basic right and not negotiable. But if people work well, if governments can work well and do well, do justice to their people, then people will not demonstrate. But I hear you, James. I'd like to spend some time with you and to really understand the reason you made such an impassioned plea for basic health care. We still take a lot of people to India. India is a what well, they call it, uh, a med this medical tourism destination. There are only three PET scans which are able to detect early stages of cancer. One at Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital, which President Uhuru launched us there with him when he did. And the other one is at Aga Khan Hospital. And now I'm told there's a third one at uh, uh, Nairobi West. We need to be able to do the best we can to save young lives. Because you say it clearly, James, that uh, many people like, huh? although God's timing, we all accept. But it's very painful because some of these things are avoidable, truly avoidable. So I still want to know what happened to mercy. Strong, vibrant, a celebrity. And thank you, our colleagues, for singing our gospel, the gospel team, and we can understand you. Now, uh, the Court of Appeal, while we are sitting here, has passed a judgment, a ruling that the finance bill 2023 was and is unconstitutional. These young men were shut down because of saying, do away with the housing levy, do away because it's a housing tax. Now we have it. It is illegal. So whatever this administration has collected by way of housing levy between 2023 and now 
was illegal. Now that is the country we are living in. <laughs> of course, 2024, thanks to the GNC's finance bill, was withdrawn. But even the thing that they are relying on to overtax Kenyans, the 2023 bill, is now unjudged and constitutional. Kenyans, we are in a mess. <laughs> we are in a mess. And uh, yeah, that's it. I think people need to go back to the <laughs> factory setting. What went wrong? And I'm yet, yet I'm sure as, sure as, 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 as sure as can be that God is on the throne and he is God. But when you get wrong leadership, you suffer. Are we not reminded by some famous American ambassador called John Newcastle that choices have consequences. Some of the consequences are very difficult to fathom. But we allow us the AIC, African Inland Church here. When I come to this place, I always remember Mzemoy because I know the efforts he made to make this place what it is today. Uh, a true believer of a president that time, we didn't have a lot of those things. We had other difficult things as Charity Lilo will say. She was demonstrating those days. But compared to what we have seen in charity, this is unacceptable. Do we still have a country? Yes, of course. We have our borders defined. A sovereign republic called Kenya. We are proud citizens. But something is grossly wrong. I've seen some social media, but I hope that media people here can tell the correct story. Some of us are so clear in our minds that there's nothing called government of national unity. <laughs> All that Kenya Kwanzaa did was to, to poach four members, or is it six now, from ODM, and taken together ODM members uh, because this is also very important, a new massive passion for these things. Uh, that's not the amount of government of national unity. So, the Honorable Raila Odinga has been our leader of Azumio Lamoja One Kenya Coalition. He sought to come and explain to his colleagues what happened. So that picture you see in the social media is just that, nothing more. And we're able to explain to Raila that we cannot, some of us, cannot imagine joining what they're calling a government of national unity because one, it is not, and secondly, we have purposely chosen to decide, purposely chosen to be with the Kenyan people. And our yes is yes, our no is no. We say, as a Zumiu, we are not boarding, we are not joining. So those guys who joined there have done it on their own, and I think ODM have taken the time to explain. They will have a lot of explaining to do for sure. But the rest of us are very clear that we are not joining that administration. And so I thought I could take this opportunity because it's a matter that is troubling a lot of people. There are some saying, oh, Kalonzo cannot stand without Raila. <laughs> Please spare us. We have stood before. We've been misunderstood before. We have absolutely no intention of joining William Ruto's government. But we wish them well. Because again, we are commanded unto you in Romans that we pray for those in authority, even if they are in authority illegally. Like one time, <laughs> I mean, Dada of Uganda, he was in authority of some kind. 
But we must collect ourselves and think straight and act straight. I have said that what the young Kenyan leaders have done, style Gen Z, it's amazing. It's actually shaking the whole world. Because young people armed with a bottle of water, a telephone, and a Kenyan bandera, national flag, the symbol of our unity, went out there. And then of course, but people, other people panicked and brought in the goons. I also experienced some men in black. I had a men in black experience, which still I cannot quite understand. Yeah, so these things we must understand are important. The change that the Gen Z have brought is irreversible in terms of governance. They don't even want to be in government or national unity. They just want you people in authority to follow the constitution so that we can all live peaceably with each other. I thought I could say those words and I was going to address the media outside, but I wanted people to, to know that uh, our brother Raila came to explain those things. And we agreed, we agreed <laughs> that Azumio will stay as Azumio. Opposition is important now, more than ever before. And a very strong opposition. And as he goes to the African Union, we are holding forth unapologetically for the good of this nation. And so that dear ones like Mercy will rest in God's presence, knowing what they have left behind is something solid, something of a nation. So James, take courage. Waze kutoka kule kitui west. Pauline, we um taught what you call Jabu, and uh, you know people say, "Ito na muende te, like in Ngai, muenda mono." Those things are all said to comfort each other. The reality is what James said, losing his lovely wife. But of course, we must pray for her, and. She knows she's gone to heaven and she good person. Uh, so all of you media houses, please reach those levels of excellence that your colleague was able to reach. You can even avoid mediocrity and come out a real celebrity like Massimo Weir. May God rest us all in peace. <laughs>